Become a part of one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering communities today, Heroes and Legends. Check out the description below to see two ways to support the channel. The first is Patreon, where you can get an exclusive Heroes and Legends Classic Card token. See our Patreon page for full details. Or you can explore our Amazon affiliate store, which collects and organizes some of the best MTG deals on Amazon. If you make any purchases from any Amazon sellers through these links, a small percentage will come back to support the channel. Thank you to everyone that makes this channel and its content possible. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and we have a lot of new Amonkhet information to talk about today. Early this morning when I got up, there were some leaks circulating around the message boards, but later in the morning, Wizards had a relatively lengthy article, not only confirming a lot of the leaks that we saw this morning, but also showing us new cards from Amonkhet, not to mention new mechanics, a returning mechanic, the contents of the welcome decks and additional information around that program. A lot of stuff to unpack here, so let's get started. We'll begin here with this simple leak we saw this morning. Basically, this is a poster that would go out to local game stores to help advertise Amonkhet and give them a calendar of events, if you will. And this began circulating. I assume a lot of LGS owners started to get this in their mail, and it made it onto message boards. A little bit later in the day, of course, Wizards did show all the cards that we see on here that are Amon Cut cards. So we will take a closer look at those in just a few moments. But there was one other leak that Wizards hasn't confirmed or at least hasn't shown us yet. And it is the Planeswalkers from the Planeswalker exclusive decks. So let's take a closer look at those first before we get into the confirmed information. And we're going to begin here with Gideon. Marshall Paragon. So if you're not familiar with this product, basically every time we have a new magic set, we get two Planeswalker decks and they're really meant for casual players. All the cards in them are standard legal for as long as Amonkhet is standard legal. And you will find cards in here that you will not find in the Amonkhet proper set. This is one of them. And this is a foil Gideon Planeswalker card, basically. So it costs a white and four plus two ability, untap all creatures you control. Those creatures get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Zero until end of turn, Gideon becomes a 5-5 five, five human soldier with indestructible that is still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that will be done to him this turn. Minus 10 creatures you control get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Tap all creatures your opponents control. Now the corner of the card was blocked by the box in the photograph, so we can't see the loyalty. And that does make a big difference when you're evaluating the card. But I will say this, I mean, these cards typically are not designed for like standard competitive play. These are simply designed for the casual gamer and to be able to play out of the box or maybe play in your EDH or commander deck or perhaps just play some casual kitchen table magic. And for those purposes, I think this is a fine card. I don't really expect to see this, like I said, in any competitive formats, but it could be a lot of fun to just sit down and mess around with and throw it in your commander deck. Now let's take a look at Liliana. Liliana Death Wielder, two black and five. Plus two, put a minus one, minus one counter on up to one target creature. Minus three, destroy target creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Minus ten, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. And again, her loyalty is being obstructed. She's very expensive at seven. So again, another card that's a great casual card isn't necessarily going to cross over into any sort of competitive play or anything, but that's okay. Now, this was the last unconfirmed leak that we'll see today. Everything else in this video from this point forward are things that Wizards actually presented to us in their article this morning. So let's get started with something actually kind of unique. This is a token card that you could get in a pack, but it has perforated cutouts in it. And you can cut out these minus one, minus one counters or these brick counters, more on that in a few moments, or these embalmed and exerted tags. Now, as you can imagine, embalmed and exerted are gonna be new keywords. There's going to be a brick and a minus one, minus one mechanic in this set. But let's start taking a closer look and break down what this exactly means. And we'll start off with Embalm. So Wizards explained Embalm as the following. Embalm is an activated ability you can activate if the creature card with Embalm is in your graveyard. Notably, you're not casting the card from the graveyard. So things that counter spells won't work against the Embalm ability. Furthermore, to activate an Embalm ability, pay the Embalm cost and exile the card. You can do this anytime you cast a sorcery. When the ability resolves, you create a token copy of the card. The token is a zombie in addition to whatever creature types it used to have, and it's white instead of whatever color it used to be. Also, the token does not have a mana cost. 
So I found this kind of interesting that the tokens would all be white. You would almost think intuitively these would be black tokens. They become zombies. But in the world of Amonkhet, zombies, I guess, are more like mummies in some ways. And it's more about servitude and just following direction, if you will. So because of that, they fall under white. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Let's take a look at an example of this. All right, you're looking at True Heart Duelist, the game day promo version on the left side here. It costs a white and one human warrior. This is an uncommon 2-2. Two, two. It can block an additional creature each combat, and it has an embalm cost of a white and two. On the right side of the screen, you see the token that accompanies it. True Heart Duelist, pretty much everything's the same, except it's also a zombie, and you don't see a casting cost or, of course, the embalm cost on the token. Now, according to what Wizards explained to us, if this was a red card, the token would still be white. So no matter what, these tokens apparently are white. So very interesting. I mean, the creature itself, nothing to get too excited about. It just seems like a really fair limited card. But the mechanic itself is actually very intriguing. I'm really interested to see more of it. All right, let's move on to the next mechanic and a card accompanying it. And it's Glory Bringer. Now, this is the game day top eight promo you're looking at here. And this costs two red and three. It's a dragon with flying in haste for four. You may exert Glory Bringer as it attacks. When you do, it deals four damage to target non dragon creature and opponent controls. Now, this brings up a couple questions. First off, of course, what's exert? More on that in just a second. Secondly, though, I thought this was interesting. Dealing damage to a non dragon creature makes me feel like there's at least a dragon sub theme that's going to be in the set. And that makes sense considering. Nicol Bolas, of course, is ruling this land, so you might see a few other dragons around, maybe a cycle. That's actually kind of interesting for not only gameplay purposes, but flavor purposes. Now, let's talk about that exert mechanic, and what you're going to see here is exactly how Wizards described it. You make the decision whether to exert a creature as you declare it as an attacker. If you choose to have it exert, an ability will trigger and grant you some bonus. As a trade-off, the creature won't untap during your next turn. Furthermore, you don't have to exert the creature as it attacks. If you don't, no ability will trigger and it will untap as normal during your next turn. Note that you must declare you are using exert when you declare attackers. You can't wait until later in the turn and then exert it. When your next untap step rolls around, if the creature you exerted is untapped, nothing happens and the exertion costs you nothing. So again, it's actually a very interesting concept, depending on how far they want to go with this. Really excited to see more of these cards. All right, let's move on to the next thing, and that's going to be brick counters. Now, these brick counters are going to, I assume, be on a number of cards. Here's an example that you'll find on the launch day promo, Oracle's Vault. This costs four. It's an artifact. Of course, it's a rare. Pay two and tap. Exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Put a brick counter on Oracle's Vault. Tap. Exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Now, that at least starts to make the picture a little clearer, what they mean by brick counters. You can see from the art here, it looks like they're trying to build something. And you kind of build the foundation of this card and make it more powerful as you go forward. I think that's actually kind of interesting. The card itself, I feel like, is a little too high variance when it comes to competitive play. Here's my only issue with it. It costs four, which is pretty sizable casting cost. Then for you to get any sort of effect out of it, you have to pay to tap it. Hopefully you have enough mana left behind to cast the card that you reveal. And hopefully it's a card you can actually play until end of turn. Later on, if you get the three counters on it, it becomes a whole lot better being able to not pay anything at all. Just simply tapping this to exile the card and being able to play the card for free actually is pretty awesome. But again, you still could miss with it on occasion. And that's another level of variance that I don't know that I want to risk. And it's just going to take a whole lot of effort to get to that point. It's a very powerful effect, but it takes you a while to get there. And I think right now our standard format is just way too aggressive to be messing around with something like that. But having said that, I think this is going to be an amazing commander card. Like this could be really fun in commander, great casual card. There's probably a lot of interesting things you could do with it for sure. 
All right, let's talk about a returning mechanic this time, and it's cycling. Cycling is back. You can see it on this card here, and this is the Buy a Box promo. Archfiend of Ifnir, two black and three. It's a demon flying 5-4. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. Cycling two, pay two, discard this card, draw a card. I love cycling. I'm really, really happy to see it back. It takes cards and really does add an extra power level to them in some ways, just because you are able to play some cards that maybe have a little bit higher casting cost, a little bit higher payoff, knowing that in a pinch you can simply cycle them away and get another card that you might be able to play if you're stuck on mana or something like that. I really, really love this ability. Can't wait to see what they do with it. I hope they support it with a lot of cards like this. I just love the idea that we're already seeing a Cycles Matters card, so hopefully we'll see a lot more of those. Power-wise, I think potentially this could see some standard play in the right deck, especially if cycling really is supported strongly in this set. All right, now that we've looked at all of the promo cards, something else that kind of ties in, they showed us the winning game mat for game day. So if you go to your LGS on game day, enter that tournament and win, this will be your prize. And I was a little surprised not to see a member of the Gatewatch on it, but the art looks actually pretty amazing. So is that everything? Oh no, we got more to look at. <laughs> so Wizards showed us a whole bunch of cards that are actually featured in the Welcome Decks. And they also made an announcement that there's a new program starting the weekend before Amonkhet's pre-release. And it sounds like it's going to occur every time there's a new set the weekend before the pre-release. And it's called the Open House. So this next one will be Open House Amonkhet. And the idea is you bring somebody to the store with you who maybe is trying to get into magic, trying to learn magic, and you're able to get one of these welcome decks and hopefully teach them and maybe get them interested to come to the pre-release the next weekend. It's actually a pretty awesome idea, and it's going to hopefully help grow the game even more, and that's really important, obviously. So the cards that came out of this, though, we got a few interesting reveals. We'll look at deck lists in just a few moments. But the first two cards I wanted to show you are cards that will not be in the Amonkhet set, but they will be in some of the Welcome decks as well as the Planeswalker decks. So let's look at these cards real fast. We have Graceful Cat and Tattered Mummy. I mean, nothing super exciting. They are meant to be casual, fun cards. That's pretty much what they're going to be. Just simple commons for these decks. Next, we're going to look at cards that are actually in the Amonkhet set, starting with cards that are reprints. So the following cards are actually in these welcome lists as well, but they will be found in the Amonkhet set too. And there's seven of them. There's some old favorites here. These are all reprints, of course. Impeccable Timing, Mighty Leap, Grave Digger, Ancient Crab, Fling. That can actually be very powerful at times. Giant Spider and Spidery Grasp. Again, cards that might not necessarily cross over into the standard environment, although some of them may occasionally, but again, this is going to start giving us an idea of what that limited game is going to look like for Amonkhet. And I'm very happy to see Fling and even just old favorites like Giant Spider. It's not an amazing card, but it can be really good for you in limited. All right, the next set of cards are actually brand new cards that are, again, included both in the Welcome decks as well as Amonkhet proper. And you have Dune Beetle, which is a simple two casting cost one four. Curse Minotaur, three drop, three two of Menace. Angler Drake, which costs six, but it's a four four flyer. And when it enters the battlefield, you can bounce a creature. Hyena Pack, which is a three four for four. And finally, Six Sense, which is basically a green curiosity. It's kind of interesting. Again, not cards that are necessarily going to take over standard or anything like that. But again, it gives you an idea of what to expect from this limited environment going forward. All right, finally, we'll wrap things up with the five welcome deck deck lists. And do keep in mind, like I said before, these are all cards that will be standard legal as long as Amonkhet's legal, even if they don't show up in the regular set or in the Planeswalker decks. We'll begin with the white deck. And you can see here, they try to pick out like these fan favorite cards, cards that new players a lot of times will gravitate to, like Sarah Angel is a great example of that. There are some cool cards in here too, like Divine Verdict, Standing Troops. Let's look at the blue you have Sphinx and Magosi made it in there. Air Elemental, another real classic card. Over in black, you have Nightmare, Singer, Vampire, Untamed Hunger. For red, you have Siobhan Dragon, Thundering Giant, Flame Lash. Some interesting things. And finally, in green, you have Rootwalla. I always like that card quite a bit, actually. You get things like 
Cow Prowler and Oaken Form. So some interesting cards. Definitely cards that will help a new player start to learn the game, if nothing else. Now, having said all of that, that's the information we got for today. Now, official previews begin next Monday, so it's still a week away. However, if any new information comes out between now and then, I'll definitely get it out to you all and report it. Other than that, we have some other great content lined up this week. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.